just wanted to do a quick overview, I'll try to keep it short and sweet, on the DMA engines again. Uh, this is something Jamie went in depth with uh, a depth on two or go. But uh, it, work has continued on it, and uh, I just wanted to review some of the results and um, where you can use it. It's, it's, uh, it's actually this close to available, so <laughs> I get it enough of it. So th these are the general purpose DMA engines on the X5000 and A1222. So we're only talking those platforms. Um, other chips might have their own engines, but uh, we're talking about these ones. Now, they're implemented in the FSL DMA resource, which exists inside the SG kernel. And that was uh, uh, written by Jamie Kruger. Uh, he was contracted to implement this thing. And uh, I put a link to his company in case you need a DMA engine or a driver or something. Give Jamie a call and uh, make a deal because he can he can write almost anything. <laughs> he really helped us out here. So, uh, yep, bit by bit software group. <laughs> there you go. Um, so there is a wiki page, and I gave a link to it. But I'll, I'll, um, this is not new information because, like I said, a couple of cons ago we did we went through this, but uh, it's still there. Uh, X5000 and the 1222, they have eight channels each, but um, we reserved two of the other channels on the 1222 for the audio driver. As it turns out, the audio chip on the 1222 is external to the SOC, uh, the CPU, and so we needed a way to talk to it, and that's the way it likes to talk. It's the top three DMA channels. So we had to take two away. <laughs> but that's a normal thing you need to do on these kind of uh, Design, so that's not a big deal. Now, um, the requirements. This is the tricky bit. So the the weird thing is, it's in the SDK that you can download right now. There's an API there, and you can compile to it. But if you try to run it, it won't work because the kernel isn't out in the public. <laughs> Where's that Trevor character again? Anyway. <laughs> So we are releasing the kernel because, of course, the 1222 is coming out, and that has new kernel, so the kernel's going out. It's just a matter of how and when. And uh, I think I went, I said that last year, too. So I'm saying it again, one more time. <laughs> but now we have an excuse that, uh, that can't be ignored. Like we, we have to release it. No more holding back, right? You need at least 5451. I, I, I anticipate we'll be releasing kernel 5460-something, I imagine. So this is a few releases back. And uh, also, I found out uh, today, yesterday, that Jamie added more features to the DMA engine. So there's a couple new API functions that just came out fresh. Now, I don't have them in this particular presentation, but uh, it'll be in the SDK as well. And, I'm actually going to have to talk to uh, the boys about getting the SDK released along with it. Uh, hopefully we can do that coordinated, or I'll just throw it up on the proposal or depot if we can't get it done quickly enough. We'll see how it works. Because <laughs> we need that out there. Right? And it's just some header files and an auto doc, so it's not a big deal. And examples, right? So it's not a huge problem. Uh, so we, we played with, um, we've been playing with this DMA engine, trying to see what happens when you apply it to copy them. So I don't know if you know a lot about Amiga OS, but there's a routine called copy map. It's the heart of the OS that copies memory, copy from A to B, right? And the idea is that I should be able to get a speed increase if I use the DMA engine, right? It's the general idea. Uh, the old classic one, they even had the copy men quick uh, function. They're trying to make it quicker. It eh, never really worked that great, but it was there. And um, we had it, I had, we slash I, I can't remember, added some commands to the new ECC client. Uh, I'm not sure if we mentioned this before. It's the exec SG command and control client. So this is a way to modify its behavior at runtime. So you can send commands to the kernel and it will modify behavior. One of the commands is do DMA copies. 
turn it on, off, change the threshold to A or B. And uh, so we have the beta testers and some developers poke at it, and got some benchmarks. So I just want to show you quickly the, uh, the results, because the thing that speaks volumes is results. Because we always thought, oh, it's going to be fantastic. Well, it is good. It is good. And these are the numbers I just had a few days ago. And you can see on the left-hand side, we have the, the size of the buffer or the copy that we're doing. And then uh, the CPU means how many, uh, I don't know, is it microseconds? It doesn't really matter what the unit of measure is, as long as it's the same on the CPU and DMA. <laughs> well, that's the same unit of measure. And uh, you got a number, right? And then, you, then I just did a percentage, um, percentage uh, decrease on it. So it's that much faster, right? So you can see I got up 69% faster on that particular buffer size. And then, then you see some strangeness. It's like, oh, well, that's weird. It dropped at 512. Well, who knows, right? Yeah, maybe my test is wrong. Maybe the DMA engine did something funky. I don't know. But uh, these are actual numbers of a running program, which I found interesting. Which I found interesting. So, you know, it's good. It's good. And then, uh, then we look at it in a real world scenario, right? So one of the hopes was a heavily, heavily loaded system where it's really, really busy. It should be able to offload the copies to the DMA engine to get back, right? Well, that does work, but your DMA copies need to be about one meg or larger before you really notice it. So you have to have fairly large copies, right? Now this kind of goes back to what Harold just talked about. He said the, the file system was limiting his copies to 128K, right? Well, that's no good. <laughs> we need to get his copies up to one meg or larger, and then we can use the DMA engine and really move stuff around quickly, because in Amiga, unfortunately, every time you, pop, every time you want to edit or load a file or save a file, it, it's copied multiple times. So the faster we make our copies, faster the thing will run. Now, uh, other operating systems have evolved since, like Linux, where it does no copies, it tries to do zero copies. It doesn't even get crazier speeds. But, but we have what we have, so we're going to try to speed up what we have. <laughs> and uh, obviously, we should have larger chunks of data moving around. Because uh, when we do benchmarks on the system, we find it's just zillions of small copies of 64K or less. Just tons of them everywhere, all throughout the system. Sometimes you see like three bytes being copied. What? Right. Just terribly inefficient, terribly inefficient. So then the DMA copies have very little advantage, right? And on a general purpose point of view, like for general purpose, you're not getting a lot of bang for your buck. Because it takes a lot of effort to set up your DMA copy, the engine Runs like crazy fast, super duper big. Comes back with your copy finished, and um, that costs money to set up and tear it out. Right? Not money, it costs time. Right? And uh, so you got to offset one with the other. Now, uh, one of the nicer features that uh, that Jamie added at the at the end there was um, chaining, where you can chain multiple different transactions into one big uh, big transaction. And you take a bunch of little ones, chain them all up into one big transaction with the DMA hardware. And uh, that's when you get a lot of bending too. So you got to be able to queue up these small things to make one copy of them. Now, uh, I also wanted to point out the SDK, as you can download right today, it has all these wonderful examples in it that show exactly how to use the API, and there's there's a there's an example for everything, so it's very complete. Uh, we even got a stress test and, and a copy map test, so it's a very feature complete. The examples, and I was just going to show to you here, and then uh, I just want to point out the current SDK, the one that's out in the public right now. You have two, basically two API. Uh, entry points, copy them DMA and start DMA chain. 
uh, copy DMA, copy mem DMA is just your usual, just copy a block from A to B. With synchronous or asynchronous um, transactions, so you can choose. That's that's a nice feature. Uh, our current copy mem is blocking only in, in the OS. Um, and there's also this, like I was talking about DMA chain, where you can chain multiple copies into one. Um, big mega transaction, you just feed it to the engine and it comes back finished. <laughs> Shows you how to use that. And again, synchronous or asynchronous, feature complete. When, it, when you do it asynchronously, it sends a message to your uh, task. Well, when you say asynchronous, is you call the function, yeah. it returns immediately to your program, yeah. and then you can be notified in different methods. Oh, okay. You can have a signal, you can have a notification function, callback, so it depends on your what How you, you set it up. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I do remember Jamie saying that uh, the other two entry points, I think it was two they added, are more for driver writers. So the heralds of the world, right? <laughs> Perhaps. And uh, they had even more uh, ease of use, access to the DMA engines. So this is a. These, these engines are a part of the chip, and they're just like a peripheral of the chip. You can use, you don't have to use them. And they can access one of the parts of the view. They can access every bit of RAM in the main memory. Cards? Cards? Uh, that'd be a Jamie question. I don't think so. <laughs> you can't, I mean, you have to rely on the card to yeah, transfer to the graphics, bus, right? for example. Let's right? go over the bus. Generally, you don't, okay. chips don't do that. That's that's a bus. Right. Can I ask you a question on this? Question? Yeah. All right. So one of the kind of critical things that I've never entirely been clear about is I've got some amount of storage that I want to move. Now, should I try to be smart and say that I know what the optimum sort of buffer size is and then break up each movement into an individual fall? Should I use chain? How do I know? See, I, I don't I don't know the performance of my memory subsystem. I don't know the internal working of the DMA. I don't know any of that stuff. I just know I've got some blob that I want to move. What how do I know how to structure it? Do I just allocate a giant enormous buffer and say go copy this to that destination? And it knows what to I mean, how do I how do I set all this stuff up? How do I know whether to handle it handily or so make use of the, the chain feature? I'll just reiterate the question. Summarize it. So basically, uh, the question was, how do you know how to set up your transactions? Right? Yeah. Like, do I chop it up into bits? Do I make a buffer of this alignment? Right. Do I use this size? And how do I know what the optimal size is? What is the optimal size? Yes. Yeah. Et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And uh, the only for sure answer I have is you have to test it. <laughs> basically, you have true. to test it to know for sure. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you can, you do know for a fact. Our current kernel, its favorite size is 4K. It loves 4K. And if you make anything 4K in a division of 4K, it likes it. What's the default page size? That's the default page size. That would explain why. It loves 4K, sure. right? But then there's layers on top of it, right? Layer after layer. And if you're doing disk driver, like Harold found, the file system is your limiting factor sometimes, right? It has a certain buffer of a certain size, and it should also have alignment of a certain restriction built on top of the 4K pages, right? <laughs> well, which size is the best? And then um, to add even more complexity, you have like that, what is it, Sony drive? Throwing RAM in there too to buffer everything? Oh, with right? the so forth. It doesn't care what alignment size it is now, it's chopping it up and do 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 do. So really, you, you can't know until you test, which is very frustrating for the generic programming types. Right? Well, or how much different differences between the various architectures that are supported. Yeah, I mean, various you're only supporting two now, but yeah. the next 1,000 would be something else to support. And that's for this particular DMA engine, too. Right. Like, this DMA engine is one of the most flexible that I've seen in a long, long time. It can 
handle um, uh, unaligned copies, and they can handle any size copy. Very unusual. Usually they're very restricted. I must have so it on this page. I must have it on this. Can you um, yeah. give uh, let Jamie tell it? Oh, you, you, does, does Jamie want to say something? Is hey, that that's the lab. He says it. Um, oops. Echo. Turn yours down. Okay. Oh, yeah. Look at, okay. There he is. There's Jamie. She's done. Hello? Yeah, I, I do have some data to take and answer some of those questions. I, I did send some stuff to uh, Stephen. I don't know if he had a chance to incorporate it. But I could share a screen here to show you some of uh, the results of the testing. So I, I did a test series uh, where uh, I built a series of, uh, of block sizes. So you have a number of blocks and a size of those blocks. And then copying it with the CopyMem, copying it with the CopyMem DMA single call. Uh, approach and then using the uh, DMA chain and it really shows you know the uh, the kind of the optimal sizes and number of blocks and size of blocks really comes into the whole thing so uh, I can like I said I can show that if, if Stephen didn't get my uh, uh, PDF uh, I, I sent him earlier incorporated into this and uh, as, as well as the uh, source code example of, of what it does but okay Anyway, continue. Thank you. No, you share, share your screen then. Show, show, show us the graph. Can, can you share your screen and show us the graph? Oh, sure. Let me see if I can bring it up here. Share the screen. He's the same problem you have. Yep. It's always the same problem. Well, that's okay. That's sharing the entire screen. Almost there. I just wanted to share the window, really. See if I get it to do that. He was just sharing one button. There's a lot of buttons. Use it. Okay, well I'll, I'll just bring up the the screen, share the share the screen here. This and then go get this guy to go full. I have too many screens. <laughs> you thought it was just me. <laughs> it's, it's tough keeping track. It's tough. Hey, you can't even use the cards. Yeah, you're using like, a lot of video conferencing, apparently. I go on a day. And you still don't look really? Good. Yeah. I share screens of QAMU through. So you can see this first. Everything's moved. Every client is different. Which one do you use online? Teams. I tried to simplify this by taking and turning off all of my external screens and just doing this on the laptop, but it, uh, it's not making it a lot easier. Yeah. I would let me share just the window, but... Okay. I don't know if Zoom can do that. Teams can't. Teams yeah. Either window will... Yeah. Yeah. There you go. That looks good. Oh, okay. Can you see that? Yep, 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 yep. 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 Question is, can I control it? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, yeah. This is uh, this is a block of data. Ah, crap. Come on. So, what we've got here is we've got some numbers. Now, this is an example of the uh, using uh, setting up a, a, a series of 512 blocks uh, of various sizes. So the first column here is you know number of blocks. Well, it's all 512 for this test, and then the size of the, the bytes that you're doing per block, and then this is just the total size 4K all the way through to like 128K. 
And then there's how long it took the DMA chain to complete it, how long the copy mem DMA, and then how long for copy mem. And you see the highlighted section here uh, shows that when you hit about 512 bytes of, with a, you're doing 512 blocks of 512 and larger, then the DMA chaining, it, you know, beats everything else. Uh, you see it's at 393 uh, microseconds uh, as compared to best case scenario with the copy map, like 598. Now what, like what Stephen was saying, uh, when the CPU is busy uh, taking and doing other things, that copy mem figure gets a lot worse. Uh, but when you're doing the normal copy mem DMA, it's got so much overhead to, to manage taking in and getting that single copy, especially when you um, are just giving it the virtual addresses. You're, you know, so it's got to figure out where it is in memory, it's got to figure out the scatter gather list of all the pieces of it, and then do, then plug that into the hardware and then go. Where the DMA chain, you set it up ahead of time and you just tell it to go, right? So if you've got a whole chain of transactions or of copies to do, uh, you can kick them off and then it doesn't matter really uh, so much what the CPU overhead is because it will um, take and uh, not affect the DMA hardware as it just chucks through and does all of the stuff. So there's a graphical, there's the kind of chart view, kind of shows it. In this case, of course, we're looking at um, uh, the, the smaller the, uh, the bar, the better, the faster it is. And uh, you know this, and these results. Uh, let me see if I can show it on the other one too. I did a whole series of them. Uh, let me stop sharing. Oh, wait a minute, I've got the screen now. So this. Oops. Oh, here. Got this control bar right in my way. There we go. Okay. Now, can can you see that uh, spreadsheet? Is that still coming through? Well, I see the graph. We're on the graph still. The bar graph. You're still on. You're still on the bar graph. Okay. You just know how to make drivers. You can't run client stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, on the, I'm on the laptop using the, the, uh, the pad and the and mouse buttons, and it's like the it's completely alien. I just don't do it. You know, the, the new wireless tank mouse does work on a PC. Oh, I have them, yes. Yeah. And they, and they do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> We've just got, uh, it's, it's kind of a weird uh, setup because I have all of my, um, uh, I use like six screens all on the side of me here, so it's. The laptop is set up and it's all tied together, driving everything, and I can't take and get my camera view and everything on one side. So, see if I can get the share screen to go again. Let's see if this works. Yes, yes, there's this spreadsheet with a lot of numbers. Okay, good. So, here. Okay, no, there. Keyboard's not even responding. What the heck? So I'm having so much trouble. <laughs> All right, but, yeah. Or is this share thing? So there's a. Um, I got to get this over so you can see the number of blocks. There we are. Okay. And so here you can see. Maybe I have to, hopefully I don't scroll this too fast. That first block, uh, uh, that's you know eight blocks of again eight through 256k. Of, of bytes, and it's the same kind of thing. Once it hits about 8K, well, then it's faster. And you go down, and it's like, okay, we increase that to 16 uh, blocks of transfer, and you're still looking at about 64, it's probably about 64K. Uh, it becomes quicker. And then that's this one is kind of a, an anomaly. I don't know what causes it to, uh, to gap like that, but 
when it did 32 blocks of different sizes and it got like, well, 4K, did a 4K block in 97 microseconds, but then it did an 8K block, you know, in uh, 1511. So, and then it went right back down to, using, to, to doing 307. So, I don't know if that's just a, an oddity or, or what, but the, uh, the point is, is that uh, it, it does take a lot of testing to kind of figure out where the sweet spot is for what you want to take and set up. But it's pretty consistent with the, uh, the DMA chaining um, becomes the fastest scenario whenever you're doing you know, like 512 bytes or more. Whereas the, uh, the copy them DMA versus straight copy them is like what Stephen was saying. I mean, you may, you may have to be pushing around the bag or faster to guarantee it's going to be quicker. And, uh, but to, to kind of address the question of, well, how do you know how to set it up? Uh, in the example of um, the, uh, that demonstrates how to do this chaining uh, function is uh, a couple of, couple of routines that I wrote uh, to show you exactly um, where to do it. And that, and that is, no, it's not that one, that's the uh, debugger. Uh, See if I can bring that back up. And actually, I have to go back out that far. Yeah, I was looking for it. I just need this. There we go. Okay. There we go. No, my keyboard's working. All right. Uh, can you see some code? No. no we, we still see the uh, spreadsheet. Yeah, we still see the spreadsheet. Oh, you still see the spreadsheet, okay. Yeah, well, in that case, let me stop the share again. And I will try this one. There you go. Okay, now we're getting there. All right, let me see if I can get some more space on here, and uh, maybe make this, I think that's about as big as I can get it to on here without going crazy. All right, all right, so uh, some of you can take and read that. Let's see if I can get down to, oh, I should be able to jump down. Here we go. Yeah, see, I created a couple of functions called uh, allocate DMA chain, initialize DMA chain, free DMA chain. I had actually considered the possibility of adding these to the uh, to the API as externally available, uh, but so far uh, I've just done them as uh, as functions within the within the test program that's just distributed. So let's see if I can get that just down a little bit. Okay, so this whole test thing, yeah, it just takes and um, you know allocates two big areas of memory and then divides it up into um, these uh, uh, DMA chaining arrays. And the the header file uh, describes uh, the maximum sizes and the optimum sizes. So I'd like you, if you're doing a single uh, transfer, an optimal size uh, block size is about 64k. Uh, but it can do uh, it can do a lot more. So, let's see here. Yeah. So what this function is taking and doing is it's it's, it's literally just following the rules of the DMA hardware itself, and on how it, you set up this um, uh, contiguous array, because that that's what a, a DMA chain is. So you start with an, an array of repeated structures. 
and each one points to the uh, source and destination of what you're going to copy, and then you know provides uh, any uh, parameters about how it's supposed to do it, and uh, and the size of it, of course, and then ultimately it'll end it with this uh, this guy right here, FSL DMA uh, end of end of uh, line flag. End of link is actually what it is. So that's how you, you piece the whole thing together. So that's that's the best approach right now. If you literally just follow the example, use these functions, which will allow you to take in, you know, allocate and set up uh, the the, the uh, number of entries you want, and uh, with you know, with, and you populate your pointers to where that's where that's going to go, and uh, and then you just hand it to the hardware. Now there's another level to this as well uh, that not only can you take and uh, uh, set up a DMA chain and uh, you know have it just execute the whole thing, but you can also set up lists of chains, and you can also take and um, tack on to the end of the uh, a list even if it's even if it's executing right at the moment. So. It'll just rip through it, and when it gets to the end, it'll go, oh, there's the pointer to the next one. You know, so in a multitasking uh, setup, uh, you kick off a chain, and then you your program would uh, get control to um, take and uh, set up the next one, and then you attach that to uh, in just replacing the end the end flag thing, and just you know kick it off, and it uh, it'll go. So. That's, a, that's another step of improvement that can be made uh, um, available. It's not only giving you the ability to just start a chain, but to start a list of chains that you can dynamically add to. But the exact API for taking and doing it, I haven't um, figured out how much of it should be uh, public and how much of it should be. Or, you know, is it too much? I don't know. Those are kind of questions for Stephen, I think. Yeah. But, so, I mean, I just quickly, I just, I just wanted to take and, and uh, show that uh, and to kind of answer that question. So let's stop the share here. Thank you, Jamie. I appreciate it. By the way, for you folks Thank wondering, you. all that code he just said and showed is, uh, that's an ESP. It is, right now. Right. Uh, yeah, good, good part of it. Checking yeah. in the very last uh, uh, changes and stuff to it. Um, that I was uh, doing over the weekend. I got kind of involved in the whole uh, DevCon thing. Uh, otherwise, I really haven't done. But uh, yeah, because I, I, I had to, I, I had to move it over. As Stephen knows, I, I had to take and um, pull it over into a previous uh, pull of the kernel earlier build before the latest experimental stuff, because the latest experimental stuff is stable yet. Um, and so, in order to, to fully test what I had done, I had to. Implemented into a slightly older kernel, and then uh, I'm working on moving that stuff forward into the main one and then committing changes. But yeah, all of that stuff is going to be on uh, in the SDK when they finally get it out there. And I'm also going to be working on um, expanding the wiki page with uh, the uh, the functions that are missing from there and the examples uh, that are there. So. So hopefully, uh, if it takes a while to get into the SDK and the SDK to get out, we'll be able to see how to do it uh, with the wiki page uh, before that. Will it be on the test? Uh, yep, it will be on the test. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jamie. Yep. I'm going to uh, turn no my problem. mic back on. Let you continue. There, there you go. I love that live interaction stuff. <laughs> now, hopefully Jamie's muted. Okay, so yeah, we're not crisscrossing each other. <laughs> it gets really strange here if, uh, if I talk at the same time the presenter talks. It's just not fun <laughs> in the in the live room. So there you go. There's there's uh, that should help you out uh, with your question. Yep. And I think Jamie alluded there that um, the DMA engine like 64k. I forgot that. Yeah, there's some sort of global link it's set somewhere. Um, it, it likes that number. Well, it's, he's actually got it set. There's a, an yeah, SSL optimum it, there's something. A, it's a, there's a define somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, there's a define. 
in the in the header class. Okay. Yeah. So if you want to uh, use it for copying uh, frames of the video or something around, I, I think we actually in the beta group somebody did um, an Odyssey build that was using the engine as an experiment. You remember way back? No, I don't remember. Oh, it, it was tried. Uh, Frederick tried it and wanted to see what it would do. Help a little, but not a lot, right? It, it's a, again, we couldn't quite get the, the right uh, the right uh, balance there. Balance, yeah. So you kind of have to have a a scenario where you're moving data quite a bit in succession. Like, do you, see, do you if you have a bunch of data, you're moving it all the time. You need an Ethernet driver kind of scenario where you got data coming in, going out all the time, and it just never stops. That might be the kind of application we have to deploy to. Although the DMA had hardly, sorry, the Ethernet driver has its own channels, so it doesn't need a general engine. <laughs> but you can imagine the kind of scenario. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. It's really made to move data fast. Yep, and then I think another net is, is don't think you can get around the overhead cost just use to the chain. No, large, you're always going to have set. overhead with this stuff yeah. for setup. Uh, Terra is very quick, but setup takes a while. Yeah. I think uh, Harold had that problem too with his driver. He said setup time for those chains was quite intense. But once you set it up, it was like, wham! You know? Yeah, yeah. So same kind of scenario again. The hardware is fast, but you got to set it up correctly. So there you go. Uh, any other questions? Because we're, we're late on our other presentation here. <laughs> A little bit, 15 minutes, not too bad. Any, any burning questions from the uh, internet there? I see nothing. No? All right. And I will hand it over <clears throat> to the next guy.